quickly turn your Bibles once more to Numbers 11. I'm going to read from the first verse to 22nd verse. You know, I want to speak today about a land which is in transition. You know, I'm going to speak this prophetically, and, and I just believe that uh, for us, it's as a church, as a ministry, we know, you know, and even some of our individual lives, there's a, there's a place where sometimes we are in transition. And uh, I want to start reading from the first verse. It says, Now when people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it, and His anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Tabarah, because the fire of the Lord had burnt among them. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now the manna was like coriander seed and its color like the color of delium. The people went about and gathered it, ground it on millstones or beat it in the mortar, cooked it in pans and made cakes of it. And its taste was like the taste of pastry prepared with oil. And when the dew fell on the camp in the night and the manna fell on it, then Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which he swore to their fathers. Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me. Where am I to get for they weep all over me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I'm not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here. And now, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my wretchedness. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting, that they may stand here with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourself for tomorrow and you shall eat meat for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us meat to eat for it was well with you in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty, for the, but for the whole month, until out of your nostrils and, and becomes loathsome to you, because you have despised the Lord, He is among you, and have wept before Him, saying, Why did we ever come out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people who are among you are six hundred thousand men on foot, and yet you have said, I will give them meat that they may eat for the whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough for them? And the Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's arm be shot, been shortened? Now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, here the children of Israel had some great promises. They were going to go to the promised land. And they had come out of Egypt. Egypt was a place of bondage. And now, you know, they were, there was a great, of, a lot of promises spoke over them. There were prophetic words given that, you know, they're going to be blessed. And, and now they are in this place of transition where they're having only manna to eat. 
I know the people get very discouraged. They're saying, you know what? Oh, you know what? I, you, you gave me so many great promises. You know, you gave, you know, said that, you know, great things are going to happen. But now we are in this place. We don't even have food to eat. You know, we don't know not, not even having meat to eat. And uh, so many times in yours and my life and even in life of what we are doing, we come to this place of transition. We come to the place in between where you know that the promises of God are there, but you're in this place where you're not seeing anything happen and you can become, you can become, and you, you can become discouraged. You can become lonely and you can say, you know what, where is God? You know, it can be that you're facing a problem where you're in between jobs and say, you know what, God's promised a great career for me. You know, now what's the situation? What am I doing? Or it may be that, you know, you believe God for some finances and you're saying that, you know, that's not coming to pass. Uh, or it can be that you're believing God for healing and, and some sickness where you know that the promises of God is to heal you, but you're not seeing that come to pass. And, and you can come to this place where you feel completely discouraged and you feel that things are not going where what it was. Listen, for us, even in the life of the church, you know, today, I believe that we are in this transition. Just like the, the days where, in this time where Israel was, there was a transition. And I believe that prophetically we are in this place. And how you deal with this, in this place of transition, we'll see where you're going to be spiritually. Listen, I want to repeat that. See, everybody will go through a place of transition. And in that place of transition, there is a great tension. And how you deal with that place will determine where you are going to be spiritually. Amen. Sometimes people think that there will never be any problems. You know, that you must be, you must be in some other world. Sometimes people think that, oh, you know what, just because I've been touched with revival, I will not have any problems. Listen, that's not true. You know, sometimes people think that, oh, you know what, because, you know, because I have the glory of God living in me, I'm anointed. I'll tell you one thing, then you have the biggest battle because the devil doesn't like you. So, everybody will have to go through this place of transition. And how we handle that, that land in between will determine, you know, how high you go. And how far you go. And that's, that's the case for every, in, in, in whether it's in our personal lives, whether it's in our families, whether it's in our jobs, whether it's in the ministry, and, whether it's, and, and it's in the church. And here, you see that the children of Israel were in this place of transition. They had some great promises which were spoken to them that they're going to cross Jericho and they're going to see you know, Jordan, I and mean, they're going to cross Jordan, and they're going to see Jericho walls coming down, and they're going to go to the promised land. But here they are in this place of desert where they're seeing, they're not even having food to eat. And that place can be very discouraging. It can be a place of a great pain and, and confusion and, and complete chaos. You know, people even who love you will look at you and say, you know what, you told about that, so those great promises, see where you are, you know. Uh, God, you, you heard, uh, we heard, we heard you telling that God's going to do this, but look at where you are in your life. Look at where you are in your, in your ministry. And I want to tell you something. Even as, as a church for us, you know, we are in this place of transition. I remember, you know, when we started five years back or six years back, and then especially the last, you know, when, when Lord really started touching us with revival, we were all so excited. I remember those nights where, you know, some of you were there in, those, in that small hall where glory used to come and, and it was so powerful and, you know, which is like 20 people, 25 people, but it was so powerful and I saw so many people were really touched in that place and I was really touched and I said, oh, you know what, this is amazing. And this is the best thing that can happen because, you know what, till then, you know, we never saw things like that. We know the strong presence of the Lord came and, and you know, we, the glory came and we didn't, a lot of times we didn't want to even leave in the nights and we used to go on sometimes to 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock and there are nights even 2 o'clock, you know. 
So I'm talking about 2009, 10, you know, especially those years where, you know, it was all a beginning and, and we can just say, you know what, oh, that was amazing. Then 2011 and 12 and, you know, how in the beginning where we, it was all about glory and, you know, then sometimes, you know, we can get too practical. We want to grow the church and we want to, you know, we want to see things are balanced and we want to see this and we want to see that and, you know, and, you know, I remember in the first three years we went to Africa. We did pastors' conferences. We went to we did conferences in India. You know, and we were just excited to go out. We were we were small, but we were excited. We were not just saying, you know what? It's about taking the the glory to the nations, to taking the revival to the nations. And we took teams, and and it's it's it was just such an exciting time. And as the church started growing, yeah, and you know, we get into management, we get into you know running a church and ministry and. Sometimes you can come out of this place and just say, oh, you know what, uh, oh, it's all great. Because people come in and say, you know what, oh, there's a great glory here, there's a great presence here. You know, there's... But one thing the Lord is asking us, asking us in this season is, what is the mandate which God has called us? You know, listen, there is a purpose for every church and a ministry. And you can either belong to the glory, to the, to the, to the vision which the Lord has given... Or sometimes you can, you can just be lost in that. So many times I know, you know, when, when God called us, God called us into revival. Even when we didn't say it, we just believed it. That, you know, we are going to see a great revival touch our lives and through us touch this city and the nations of the world. And that's a promise. You know, and because we go through tough times, because we don't see some things, that doesn't change. Because the promises of God do not change. Amen. There, there can be seasons of transition. You know, there can be seasons where people will leave. There can be seasons where, where finances will dry out. You know, whether it's in our personal lives, whether it's in a business, whether it's in the ministry, and how you deal with that will determine how far God's going to take us. Amen. So today I'm going to speak about that land in between. You know, how we deal in this place of tension. Because it's like, you know, it's like a tale of two cities, you know. That you have great things happening and you have tough things happening. And you can either be bitter. You can be, you know, you can look at things with great bitterness and say, you know what. Oh, uh, God didn't do it for me. Or those people hurt me. You know, or that didn't happen. Or I thought we were going to go up. But that didn't happen. But Or you can look at it and say that, you know what? It's a great opportunity for me to repent. It's a great opportunity for me to humble myself. You know, I know that God has a great plan for me. It's a place. Because listen, unless we come out of this place of tension, refined with the fire, God cannot use us. Whether it's individually or it's as a church. Because this place of tension is where God builds us up. God builds character. God builds His anointing. God builds that ability to trust in Him. You know, I know that you know, we, we have this privilege of, of having so many people anointed over here. So many people filled with the, with the glory. But I'm really challenging people to go deeper now. And that's deeper in the word because that's what is going to hold us and take us further and take us to places of carrying revival. It's not just that we go high and we go into the glory zone, we go deep in the spirit, but we also go deep in the word. Amen. We, go, we, we build a strong foundation. And I know that we're going to see revival because, you know, for us, if we are here, that's the only purpose for us. You know, because we, our hearts are tuned into the fire of God, are tuned into revival, are tuned into the glory. We want to be the signs and wonders. You know, because we believe that's what the word is. We want to, so there are seasons where people say, you know what? Oh, we didn't see that much or I didn't experience that much or I experienced this in two seasons back in. But I want to tell you something. Has your heart become hardened thinking about that? Where is your heart with the Lord? Lord's been challenging me. Where is my heart? 
So in this land in between, you know, the, one of the biggest challenges a lot of people face is you can have a complaining heart. And that's what these people had in Israel. They were complaining. They were complaining. You know what? Oh, in Egypt, we had meat. Now we are having only manna. You know, we are hungry. We are not having enough food to eat. And when you go through this place of transition, it's easy to complain. And you start looking at your circumstances and you're saying, you know what? Oh, that pastor wasn't good. The church was not good enough. Or you can say, oh, my family didn't support me. Oh, my job wasn't good. My boss was not good. And you start complaining of all the things that has gone wrong rather than looking at, at God and humbling ourselves and repenting. You know, listen, I'm speaking to you as much as it's to me. Because, you know, her heart, it's so easy for her heart to become hard. You know, when we go through tough times, it's so important for our heart to be soft. You know, because in, when we come out of this, either we can grow spiritually or we can be destroyed. I'm not saying that in worldly destroyed, but you can be in a very bad spiritual state. Because you can be very bitter or you can repent and humble yourself and say, Lord, you know what? I, I, I just humble myself. I love you, Lord. I know I love you. I want you to teach me what you need to teach me. I want, I want that hunger coming back to me, for me. For me, I remember God spoke to me years back and said, Son, I want you to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Because, you know, just, you know, when I used to play cricket, I used to get up at 5 o'clock. And there are seasons I didn't get up. And then, you know what? You know, then I started praying more because, you know, there are seasons you go. And then you say, I, I, I mean, I remember telling people, you know, in the beginning, we used to always say, you need to be hungry. You need to be hungry. You need to get up and start praying. You need to pray in tongues. But somewhere along the line, we say, you know what? It's all right. You know, you can, you can pray when you want and you can do that when you want. But I realized people came and told me, you know, earlier you used to always say you're hung you need to be hungry. Earlier you used to always say you need to get up and start praying in the morning. You know, when you said that, you know, it's fine, our lives became spiritually dry because we thought it's fine and we stopped praying and we stopped reading the word. And when you used to say earlier, it used to be challenging and we used to get up. Sometimes we never used to, but, you know, sometimes I realize that it's good to make people hungry. Listen, it's, it's always important to be hungry for God because unless you're hungry for God, you're not going to repent. And in this land in between, it's a place to come in and say that it's good and great what we have seen, but it's not going to be like that in the future. Because you have to move on. You can't stay where you are. Because God wants to take us into a new, into a new place. Sometimes, you know, people can be very, you know, very comfortable in where they were. I think, I, I believe a lot of these Israelites were. They were very comfortable you know, in where they were. So when they had to move out, they became very uncomfortable. Listen, unless you really are willing to pay the price and are touched with revival where you're willing to yield our lives, you know what, so many times you won't move forward because, you know, when problems come, you start going and you start thinking, oh, you know what, oh, this is not for me and you'll start backing out. But when... We know that Lord is with us. When we are on fire, whatever we face, we're going to come out of that. Amen. Amen. So the first thing what the, what the Israelites did at that time, they complained. And that's what we can do in this time. You know, and that's a dangerous place when you start complaining, when you have a complaining heart. And let's look at your life. Where are you? Are you complaining about, about this place? Are you in a place of friends? And uh, there can be people who have been very bad to you, who would have hurt you. But when you get out of that complaining heart is when we start seeing the first place of breakthrough. The second thing, problem they had was that they were very discouraged. They were very discouraged. 
Moses was discouraged because he was tired. He had a lot of fatigue and seeing and he was wondering. He said, you know what, Lord, why have you given me these people? See how they are. But it's, that's fine. I think God honored Mo- Moses. He loved him because, you know, it's fine to complain against God. But the problem was the people. You know, you know what the people are saying? You know what? People are asking, about, why did you bring, bring me out of here? We were so happy over there eating all this meat. <laughs> it's for, and Moses really never complained about God. He was complaining about the people and he was tired. And sometimes when we go through this time, you can be tired. And God will understand that. But he never, he, he never complained against, he, he, he was just, he, you know, when you're tired, so many times, you start getting so discouraged. But I want to tell you something. God will always bring you back because as long as your heart is right towards God. But the people who were crossing over, their hearts were not right. They were more bothered about the food than about God. They were more bothered about satisfying the flesh and the things of the world than, than pleasing God and trusting God. Listen, when your heart is after God, when we go through those times of trouble, He will bring you back. It's like Benny Hinn said, I was just telling somebody else this morning, he said, you know, I'll tell you something, when God's called you, when God has chosen you for a purpose, you, know, you can back away. You can say that, you know, I, w- I don't want to yield. But God will bring something so that he can come. You can come back to him so that he can fulfill the purpose for which he has called you. So it is better for you to humble yourself and, and you to correct and you to humble yourself and repent rather than Lord making you want to repent. Because when God's caught hold of you, you can't go away. Amen. And I thought that is, that is so true. Listen, when there's a special calling in your life for something, you cannot go away. You know, he will, he, I know you will always want to come back and repent. Because that's a special call. Listen, even as Preeti was speaking of the kingdom of God, the first most important thing is to repent. So many times, you know, when, when, when you're caught up in sin, you cannot even come to this place of repentance. You know, the word, you will, you will not even want to read the word. You will not want to come to the place of prayer. If you want to come to the place of prayer, if you want to come to the place of worship, if you want to come and, and repent, that means God has got hold of you. Amen. Listen, it's fine to be tired. It's fine to be in, in fatigue. But importance is, are you willing to repent and come back? Are you want to be like Moses or you want to be like the other people, the children of Israel? So many times, you know, people come to the Lord and they'll go through the season and they'll say, Oh, you know what? Oh, what? When I was in the world, I had all that and I had all this. And, you know, or you come into God and you start living with legs on on both sides, you want one side in the world and one side in the kingdom. And very soon you will lose your balance and you, know, you don't know what happened. Listen, I want, to tell you, I, want to, I want to tell you something. If you are in this place of transition, these two are not the place to be in. To have a complaining heart and to stay in this place of discouragement. But when in transition, we need to also understand that that it is a place, a fertile ground for transformation and for growth. Amen. It's a place because you know what? Unless God takes you a lot of times through, through this place of transition, He cannot transform us. He cannot build us. He cannot grow us. Because you know, our hearts are so hard, He cannot use us. Because you know what? Sometimes people come and say, 
you know what? Oh, I'm so anointed so that, you know, God will make you grow. If you're anointed, you need to be very careful because you see more anointed people falling now. And in, in over, if you look at 90 years, you know, I, I heard a great man of preach. He said, he said more, peop, more great evangelists have fallen. So it's not, anointing is not a reason for you not to fall. So the important thing is for you to come to the place of, of humility and understanding that these places of transition are a, are, is an opportunity for us to be transformed from inside out. For us so that He can grow us, not in, in terms of how many people you have touched or not to, in, in, in terms of how big your ministry is, but how deep you've gone into the Word. You know, how you love to worship God. How you want to go deeper in a community where you're just so hungry for the presence of God. How you want to build your life on the Word. Listen, how deep you go is what, what can take you high. It's not how big your ministry is. It's not how many people get healed. Yes, we want to see signs and wonders and miracles. That does not show maturity. That does not show growth. Amen. What shows growth is how humble you are. How committed you are. How submitted you are. How planted you are in a, in a place. How you serve. And I thank God for, for that. And, and you know, God's taking us in this new season. Because you know what? God's wanting us even to reach north, south, and east, and west of London and, and do these conferences. And He is not looking for 2,000 people. He is looking for 100 people who are committed to this vision. Amen. I know we can touch the world for Jesus. If you have 100 people committed. Amen. Because this is a season where He's transitioning us. And transforming us for growth. It's a fertile land. You know, I, I just believe the next five years is not going to be like what the five years are. So you can go back and say, you know what? Oh, we had some great times when we, was, when we were like this and we were like that. And we, it was not so much of pain. And it, it was not, listen, for all of us, God's telling us, you know, we want to obey the mandate for what God has called us as a ministry. Amen. We can't do what somebody else has been called to do. We need to do what God's called us to do. And sometimes that requires a lot of breaking. That requires commitment. Like we were there for eight hours and, and it was amazing last, last thing. We want to have more times where we are pressing in in prayer, pressing in in worship, breaking the flesh. Times, like I said, of calling, calling a generation to come in and fast and sanctify the assembly like the Joel 2 call. And that may not be for every church. It may not be for every ministry. And God's calling us into this. And, and I believe that Lord's raising up people over here. Listen, the devil is not bothered about how big you are. How, how many people you can reach in ministry. He'll be happy because even if you have 5,000 people or 10,000, he what really matters is when you grow deep, when you are a powerful man in the spirit, that's when he's challenged. That's when he's challenged. And it's not about how famous you are or how famous the church is. We don't, we, that's not our intention over here. That's not the purpose over here. Some of the best meetings for me personally we've, we've had is when we, when we even go out into missions because, you know, I don't think it's because of that. It's just that we get more focused. You know, when we go into Africa, we focus for 60 days and 90 days. And, and because that focus is there for that time, you know, you start seeing a greater move of God. When, and I believe that even in London, sometimes we need to get focused for what God's called us. Amen. And sometimes people are worried. And the fourth thing I want to say is, you now people are worried about provision. Where's going to, the provision going to come from? And people over here were worried. They were worried about provision. In the land in between, listen, I want to tell you, if God's called you, if God's chosen you, and you are being transformed, and you are being changed from inside out, and you are repenting and humbling yourself, if God's called you for a purpose, the provision will come for that purpose. 
He is going to bring in the provision. When we took this building, you know, the first day we had our income of the church at that time was 2,000 pounds and the building rent was 4,500 pounds. And we said, you know, immediately we said, take it. The first month, you know, I mean, sometimes people can come and say, you know what, oh, is, it, is it practical? Is it, but that's what faith is. Faith is not about how practical you are because when God's called you for something, He will provide for that. Because He is the Jehovah Jireh. He is a God who provides. When we do something, we don't look at doing how much money we have. When we committed for, to buy a building for 925,000, we didn't have even, even 25,000 pounds, I think, or, or 30,000 pounds. But I know God's going to give us that building by the end of the year. And we are a small church. Listen, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not asking you, I'm not, this is not to, to take an offering. That's not the purpose here. Listen, the, the, when God has called us something, something and He will provide for us as long as we step out to do what He has called us to do. Amen. There is no limitation. So many times, you know, people say, you know what? I'm called. Then I, you ask them, what are you doing? Oh, I'm praying about it. They'll be praying for one year and two years and three years and they just end up doing nothing. And after three years, you don't even see them. Listen, if God's called you, it starts with humbling yourself, getting committed, getting on, on, on connecting with people who are on fire for God and being on a journey together. Loving God and serving God. There are times trials will come. Tribulation will come. Persecution will come. It doesn't mean that you're going to give up and go out. Because as you stay committed, you are going to see a change. We are going to see transformation. And God's going to provide us to take us into this next season. Amen. And I just see many people over here in that You've lost your vision. See, when you lose your vision is when the biggest problem in our life is. Not when we face times of trouble. Because when we've lost our vision, that means, you know what? You've lost hope to go after God. You've lost the hunger. And that's not a good place. And today, this morning, I want to challenge everyone to come back into, the, into what God's purpose for you, to come to a place of repentance. Because understanding that everybody goes through these times of trial. Everybody goes through these times where there's tension. And that's not bad, but how you react in that time is, is, is what will cause you either to grow or to come down. If you're going to keep having a complaining heart, and if you're going to keep staying in this place of discouragement, rather than understanding that it's an opportunity to transform and to grow. It's an opportunity for God to provide the provision. Because you know what? When you come out of that, your faith would have risen up so that you will move to the next level. Have you thought about it? Amen. Amen. Two weeks back when I said about the call of God, a Joel 2 call for us to come to this place, sanctify the congregation, to fast and to pray, to seek the Lord. I believe that God is calling us for that because you know why? He wants us to make a difference and for that sometimes we need that pressing in. We need that call to come to the place where we go deeper and we go higher. Amen. I remember, you know, sometimes people do not like it. They just think that, oh, when a church is there, it's a place to come in and you, you, you worship and you read the word and then you go and, and then, then you come next week. Listen, I, I want to tell you, there are many churches like that and we will even recommend some churches if you want to go there. <laughs> Listen, I'm, no offense for that because we, God's called us with a mission. And when you're here, you're committed because you know why? God wants to fulfill that purpose for which you have been called. And we want to help people in that. And when you are in this place, 
what we are really going to see is there's going to be breakthroughs of provision. There's going to be breakthroughs. Some of you have been saying, you know what? I have sowed this seed and I've, I've sowed so much in. I want to tell you, if you've sowed the seed, listen, wait for that harvest which is coming your way. Listen, that is an anointing being released. Because as you've been serving God, as you've been giving God, whatever you've done in the house, there is a blessing because of what you've done in building God's house. Listen, when you build a house for Jesus, He is not a debtor to anybody. And I thank God for each and every term, team which has served. Even in the last six years, and Preeti and I, we, you know, we know that it's not our church, it's not our ministry, it's a ministry for Jesus. We are building the kingdom of God in the city. And when you are partaking in that, when you're building that, what you're doing is you are building the kingdom of God. And when we go through these times, how you react will determine, your attitude will determine your altitude. If you're full of fear, if you're full of bitterness, if you're full of unforgiveness, it's very difficult for God to, to use you. And it's easy to become that. You know, I, I, for me, I, I can become like that. Every, and I know there are seasons every day I need to check, not once a month, every day. Whether am I bitter to somebody? Listen, when God's called you for something, we are answerable to God for that mandate which he has called us. And we need to be obedient to God for that. And sometimes everybody cannot be pleased for that. And that's the same with many people. Sometimes we take decisions, you know, because God's called us for a purpose. And there are some of you over here, you're wondering in this season, why has God called me? And you're saying, you're saying, I'm not seeing enough fruit. Listen, I want to tell you, fruit is coming. Because when you're in land in between, at that time, they couldn't see the fruit. But then when they crossed over and went to, when they crossed over, Jordan, they saw, started seeing the fruit. They started seeing territory. But they had to cross over for that. And how they reacted at that time determined whether they crossed over or didn't cross over. That's why a lot of people were destroyed in that time. Because their attitude in that place of tension, you know, was not something which God could take them over to the next place. And they were anointed like any, everybody else was anointed. And some of you, you know, you have some great calling in your life. But how we deal with this place of tension will determine how God's going to take us into the next realm. For us, for Preeti and I, uh, me and for us, we, we thought that in the beginning of this year, oh, we were, we were just so excited about all the promises. We said, oh, you know what? Things are going to change this year. It's going to come in two months. It's going to come in three months. It's going to come in four months. And Lord had to, to take us through this last six, seven months where we know that, you know, it was, it was not easy. But we know that, you know, he, he is doing that. He was building up tension so that he can take away all what we have and take us to the next level. Listen, that, you know how you take, how you go to the next level? By breaking you. Listen, that's how God exalts people, by breaking them. This is not like the world. People think in the world, you know, it's, it's not how high you go. It's how low you go will determine whether you can go deep or not. And I love from when, when people started, you know, for me, you know, from when we started the church and... and what I've really seen is people who've grown are people who've been committed, who come early, who come to serve. You know, who, 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 that, they are the people who've become more mature. Because that's what will determine growth. 
and will keep the passion will keep the fire will keep keep the heart growing because you know what it's so important to start committing yourself to something i'm not saying that you know this is it or that is it but find out what god wants you to do and get connected and get involved with that and when you start doing that god will start exalting you god will start giving you more areas and you'll start seeing even even other areas of provision grow in your life rather than just coming on every sunday and and you know what you're thinking oh you know what i'm doing something great i'm coming on a sunday listen listen you're coming on a sunday to worship but you know listen, listen god has a much greater purpose in your life and for that to happen he wants you to grow he wants you to grow in the word he wants you to grow in the realm of the spirit because he wants to bring fruit in our lives it's all about fruit rich listen joseph when he was in this place of transition would have never expected for what fruit would happen i think it was over 20 years how but he never complained he never he never blamed anybody if you look at joseph's life those tough times which he went through when he was put in jail and but in the end god prospered him he was building character in the life of joseph when he took him in through all this Listen there are people I can see over here you've even fallen into sin because you've lost the vision That's not the end but it's a beginning because you know what when you repent he will bring you back The problem is not the sin the problem is a vision The problem is that when we lose the purpose for which he has called us we don't have the motivation to seek after God But when we know that God's called us then we have the drive to get up and pray to get up and seek the word to come for prayer meetings to serve god to go out to evangelize to go out on mission to come to bible school because we know that it's not just about the kingdom or whatever we are doing is just to build the kingdom of god and if you believe that this is your local church serve in it if you are some other for part of some other church serve in that church or the ministry but do what god's called you to do